Hey there, Ulti Zeta here, and welcome back to more Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy 2 in the last episode. We did stuff. And in this episode, we're just gonna get right on into it and go do more stuff. Uh, let's go check out Cosmic Cove Galaxy, because this is a neat little level that is a fun little level, and is neat, and is fun, and is repetitive, because I'm repeating myself. Lol. Twin Falls Hideaway. The twin Gravity Falls. Anyways. Um, topic for this episode. Or at least one of them, because I don't think it's going to last me the entire episode. But we'll find out. I wanted to kind of continue talking about sort of a thing that I sort of already started discussing in the previous episode. Something somewhere along the lines I was talking about um, game reviews and stuff and just being in general all like I don't understand why people take it so seriously, it's just an opinion, yada yada yada. And... In all fairness, I do still think that that holds... holds up as an argument of being like, I still don't really get why... logically, people... are so... can get so, so gung-ho up on... just uh, how other people do. You only need 15. I'll get you later. I just wanted to check before referencing. But what we really want to do is go up here. Um, so... There we go. Logically... It really doesn't make sense, is the thing. It doesn't make sense why people, realistically, would get so gung-ho up about how they feel about other people's things. You know what, I kinda wanna try and get the 15 coins right, right away. Since I can see a bunch of coins, I only need three more. I can activate the thing and then just go to the actual star right now and then come back here and the Luma will already be taken care of. It's a good plan. But yeah. Logically, there's no real point in getting mad at people for their opinions. But! I have come to the sort of realization that just because there's no logical reason for it doesn't necessarily mean people aren't going to act on emotions. And while that's not necessarily how I tend to be wired as much, I do under- I have kind of realized, like, that's why people get upset. Because it's like, it's taking something that they love and appreciate, or whatever. And it's basically being like, nah, I didn't like it. Or it's like, nah, it's not good. It's like, and while that doesn't change how you feel about it, there's like this sense of like, why, how come, come on, can't you just see the same thing in it that I do? Stuff like that, it's like, stuff to make it, cause you want, you want other people to have the same kind of experience that you do. Especially if you like something. And if they, even if they say that they don't like it, it's like, you want to see them like it. You want to see, uh, it, you want other people to see in it what you do. You want them to have a similar kind of emotional response as much as possible because you just want people to be happy, I guess. I don't know. You want, that if something makes you happy, you probably want it to make other people happy too. You know, that's how it works. So, if you see something like that and it's like, like, you couldn't be happy from something, it's 
it creates the question of like, why not? Come on, can't I don't know. I'm I'm really explaining this poorly, but the basic gist of it is that people use emotional responses, and that's an emotion. Those kinds of emotional responses are what cause people to get so fervently defendant of what they love, because even if they have criticisms of it, I mean, like, hell, look at what kind of made me realize that kind of thing was actually Ori in the Blind Forest. You know, the game that I let's played recently that was amazing and I loved it. Like, at the end of that let's play, I was basically like, I can criticize this game, but I don't want to right now. And that kind of response is basically... It's basically just... That's why it's such a big deal, because, I don't know, you got a star bunny to chase, been a while, oh good, it's another really awkwardly round planet and all my star bits don't go in the right direction. Why does this planet have to be so round? This is really easy when the planet's not round and affected by gravity. I hate everything. This shouldn't be hard! But I can't aim! How did that not even hit him? I'm running out of star bits. Fine, I'll do it the cheap, boring, and easy way. Because... Fucking impossible to aim. Even though it shouldn't be. Like, you're supposed to be able to do that in like five seconds if you can just hit the goddamn thing. But on these really awkwardly round planets, it's practically impossible to aim properly, and that's stupid. There's no other point to star bits other than shooting them at things. So if you can't shoot them at things, then what's the point? I guess feeding hungry Lumas, but that makes things boring. Like, part of what makes Starbits cool is their extra utility of being able to do stuff like that. Apply them in interesting ways by hitting things. Feed them to hungry, feed them to Lumas, whatever. It's an extra little bit of interaction that you can get. And when you can't do that because of the stupid gravity mechanics, it's annoying. Especially when it normally makes things so convenient. I mean. Hitting the stupid button, freezing the planet, and just skating is... Yeah, it's not hard. So I probably overblew it, my annoyance, by being like, Oh, it's super easy. It's like, ah, whatever. But, meh. Yes. Anyways, this mission's kind of long, if I recall correctly. Anyways, back to Ori the Blind Forest. I was basically... The way I was thinking about it was how... Basically, the game was something that I didn't want to criticize, even though I could. Even though, if you asked me for criticism, I could give them to you. And I did throughout the entire game. I criticized things in the game. But at the end of the day, I just really wanted to love it. And I felt like trying to focus on what I disliked about it would be doing it, doing it a disservice, I guess. In a weird way, like... Almost as if it just didn't deserve it. Even though I know... It... Nothing doesn't deserve criticism. But... I don't know. The point of the matter is, I understand, thinking about it now, why people would get... salty about stuff like that. I still don't necessarily think it's too worth... like, getting too mad over? But I can at least understand, like, the distaste or indignance in, in essence, the salt. Not, like, heavy anger, but, like, mild disappointment and frustration, I guess. So, that's that, I suppose. Now then. 
I don't really like... This is something that kind of is relevant. I don't like how there are a lot of platformers like this, 3D platformers, that tend to just randomly go into 2D as well. Because... It's... G games like Sonic, games like Mario... Probably other... Pla I can't even think of other, other platformers right now. It bugs me, is what it is, because... I like 3D platformers, I like 2D platformers, but a 3D platformer in 2D just doesn't feel as good. Like, this does not feel as good as New Super Mario Brothers, even. I'm dead. Or not, cool. It doesn't feel good as good to play because I'm controlling a character who's meant to be in 3D, and I'm controlling them in 2D, and it's annoying. And I'd re I really kind of just, I prefer... Like, Mario 64 and Sunshine didn't do this, but... And the one time that Mario Odyssey, so far, we know of, is doing something like this, is in, like, the little graffiti thing where it's just gonna be 2D Mario. And it's n doesn't... It's not... It's gonna be a completely different control scheme because it's going to be... It's... It's gonna be like you're actually switching to 2D Mario for a second. And that's neat. But Mario 64 and Sunshine didn't have to, like, pad things out with random 2D sections, and it's like, I understand, like, the appeal because it's simpler to do 2D than 3D, but part of the reason why I play a 3D game is to play a 3D game. I don't, and a lot of these Mario games, Mario Galaxy at least, 3D Land and 3D World sort of only very occasionally did stuff like it. Galaxy does it a lot more with the 2D sections, and they just don't feel as good to play is the issue, and it's a shame. One of the criticisms to make with the game, really. Uh, I guess the whole little patch of water thing coming up is not... Alright, it's on the other side. Is. Okay, so... I was looking for, like, a little bit of water... You. I think it's that one down there. I was looking for a little bit of a water spout. Oh, it's not that one? Hmm. Which one is it then? Are you kidding? What? Okay, fine, I'll try over here. Well, now I'm just on this side. Oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. I go to this side, drill all these guys, then that opens the cage, and then I drill from this side. That's what this is. Okay. Been a while. Forgive me. Anyways. I think it's very... Sonic is very relevant in that kind of, like, 3D to 2D discussion. Because, oh my god, Sonic has a hard-on for it at nowadays. Like used to be back before Sonic Unleashed that Sonic was a 3D game series or a 2D game series. But now, modern Sonic just loves to be in 2D for some reason half the time. And it's really annoying because I want to, if I want to play a 3D Sonic game, I want to play a 3D Sonic game. And so, like, Sonic Unleashed had, Sonic Unleashed has, had, People are like, half the day, half the game is daytime stages, half the game is nighttime stages, but really, it's like, more like, half the game is nighttime stages. About, a fifth of the game is the stupid tornado things. Um, and then a third of the game is daytime in 3D, and the, the other third of the game is a daytime in 2D. And so it's like, it's such an awkward com conglomeration there. I... And then, while that could have been improved upon in other Sonic games, like, Colors and Generations all seem to just do the same thing. And it's really annoying, because I just... And Lost World did it so much, too, and Lost World especially did not control well in 2D, especially with the parkour mechanics. You have, Half the time when I was climbing up small platforms in that game, I just ended up on a wall. When I didn't want to be. And that was annoying. But like, 
Especially with games like Generations and Forces, on the Forces on the Way at least, it feels awkward because it's like, think about Sonic Generations. What is the premise of Sonic Generations? There's modern Sonic and classic Sonic. That's the point. It's like supposed to be like the two halves of the game. So, so there's supposed to be like. You play modern 3D Sonic Boost Formula gameplay, and then you play classic uh, facsimile of the old Memento based gameplay, even though it's nothing like the old Memento based gameplay, which I now know for a fact because I did that one, one playthrough of Green Hill Classic for my random every first act in the Sonic series Let's Play. Not Let's Play, but video. That was a fun video, though, I mean, Very random, but fun. But like, he doesn't feel, he does not feel like Classic Sonic at all. Which is a shame, but oh well. But like, Classic Sonic is permanently a 2D figure. Why would you then have Modern Sonic also have a lot of 2D sections? From what I've seen, like, the worst level in that entire game, Planet Wisp, for Modern Sonic, is almost entirely just 3D. J just 2D, I mean. Like, there's almost no 2D sections, and it's like, why? I keep messing up what I'm meaning when I say 2D and 3D, but you should under- You should get- You should understand what I mean, even when I don't say it properly. Also, be careful, because these guys will one-hit kill you. Just like- Just like they're- There we go. Just like their, uh, Womp, Womp brethren. Womps are now also instant kill. And it's a shame, but whatever. Anyways. So, like, it's so awkward that, like, instead of half the game being 3D and half the game being 2D, which is what the alleged premise of the game is, instead it's more like four-fifths of the game is 2D and then one-fifth of the game is 3D. I don't know. Maybe I'm just completely bullshitting up that statistic, I don't know. It's probably entirely possible to figure out exactly how much is 3D and how much is 2D. I'm not gonna do it, especially since I haven't still really played the game yet. Because, you know, I just got to unleash Colors of Next, not Generations. Um, but it bugs me because it's like, I wanna... I don't understand why there's such a prevalence of... 3D turning into 2D, especially when the gameplay is designed primarily for 3D first, so it just makes the 2D really awkward. Especially when there are actual 2D focused games, like for Mario, there's New Super Mario Brothers or Mario Maker or whatever, which controls way better than than this does in 2D. And while arguably for a little bit, Sonic didn't have a good 3. 2D analog, because, like, the only real other one they had was Sonic 4, and I think everyone complained about the physics of that game. I don't know, I've... I played a little bit of Sonic 4 Episode 1, and even less of Episode 2, but neither really felt good at all to me. But then, now we just got Sonic Mania, the 2D Sonic that a lot of people were waiting for for a long time now. Like, since it was more momentum-based rather than being more, like, boost-based of, like, Rush or sort of Advance, I guess. Not saying that Rush or Advance are bad games. I've never played them. I have no opinion on them. I just know that people think that they're, they tend to be good. And, well, people get salty when they're like, Mania's the first good Sonic game in years! When everyone just points to colors and generations and Rush games and Advance games. It's like, shut up! Now, as far as being a good classic-style so Sonic game in the first good Sonic game in years, then yeah, sure. Because we haven't had a classic so Sonic game except Sonic Generations, and that was barely classic gameplay. Really? That hit his shell? You're supposed to ground pound these things that we saw earlier in the level and hit him, but I guess I hit his shell. There we go. 
But yeah, now with Mania have it existing and s suiting that good 2D style of gameplay needs, the inclusion of it in Forces just feels even more awkward to me because, I mean, granted we don't necessarily know how it's gonna play, but it looks like it's the same as Generations and except even more because now we have a third form of character who also goes around randomly in, from 3D to 2D and it's like, okay. And while I'm not going to say, I'm not gonna act like it's going to be bad, especially since the game's not out yet, so we don't know how it's gonna be yet. But, my issue is just that it's supposed to be a 3D Sonic game, and yet there's going to be a lot of 2D sections in it, and that is what frustrates me. With Right off the bat, it's not necessarily how it's going to play or whatnot, it's going to be just the fact that it exists kind of rubs me the wrong way, especially now that we have a 2D Sonic counterpart that people are really interested in. Because, I mean, I guess that's also the other thing. We haven't had a, a, a different 2D Sonic game since, I guess, since, I guess, 2011's Generations 3DS? Well, I don't even think that one counts. That one's... That one, everyone ignores that one because it's, like, it's just a weird mo handheld port-ish. Not really a port, but whatever. I liked it, but... Kind of felt redundant. <laughs> so I guess, theoretically, the last real original 2D... Sonic game was Rush Adventure in 2007? 2007? 2008, I think. I think it's 2007, that sounds right. Two years after the original Rush. Either way. The point is just that it feels... It feels weird that a 3D Sonic game is going to be more 2D than 3D. This ended up just being a big Sonic rant. Lol. Big Lava Power Party. I didn't even re read like the name of the star. That's a pretty. That's a pretty good star name. Anyways, let's move on to the next world. Well, how about that? You fought a giant monster. Let's go on out the blah blah. We can go keep some time and space. We're gonna adventure in the TARDIS. Yay! Woo! And there's another thing sounding like a train. I don't know what it is with with all, with these modern Mario games and sounding like trains. Everything sounds like a train in this game. The Starship Mario, Gobblegut, like there's so many trains. I don't care about trains. Anyways. Whatever he was saying, I don't care. We're in this blue, cool area. Next time on Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy 2, I guess we'll go up or down, or all around. I don't know. Had to bring it back to Sonic somehow. See you guys next time.